in first john chapter 3 it speaks about the unbelievers the devil being their father yeah and the believers having god their father so one of the huge gains as a christian is that you're coming out of this abusive relationship yeah where your dad just wants to take advantage of you wow right into this um nurturing um environment Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King Podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm here back with Ivan. How are you doing, Ivan? Doing good, thanks. Good. How's yeah. your weekend? Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit busy as usual. Ah, oh, cool, cool. Well, you're a married man. Yeah. I'm a married man, I understand. Um, today we're actually speaking about the blessings that we receive in Christ. Because mm-hmm. most of the times when you go and evangelize, right, a lot of people, they're like, well, I don't want to have Jesus and lose all the fun yeah. that I have, right? Yeah. So I think maybe we can give a biblical perspective, a yeah. Christian perspective, as to why there's more gains in Jesus yeah. than what people think, and there is no losses in Christ, yeah. right? Because in Christ we receive all the, all the blessings. Yeah. So I'm going to share a verse, and I'm going to see where you want to start this when i was thinking about this topic the first thing that came to me was ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 Mm -hmm. and that we have all the heavenly blessings in jesus christ Mm -hmm. so paul was encouraging the believers that you're not losing anything you're gaining everything so where would you like where would you like to start this topic? Uh, well, there's there's a few places I want to go. So one of them is what you're talking about uh, when you know people who are not Christian at all, um, their view. I'll, I'll touch on that. But another thing I want to talk about also later is people who are in Christ, uh, I guess, who are Christians, but also not benefiting from the full blessings as well. So okay. I want to talk a bit about that as well. But I want to start with. Uh, the worldly perspective, and it's a bit a bit of like a paradox where, uh, you know, when you're not in Christ, when you're not a, a Christian at all, you, you think, why would I want to be a Christian if I be a Christian? I get to lose all the fun that I'm having, all the sin. And the paradox is when you become a Christian is you, you're like, I'm, I'm so glad I turned away from all of that stuff. <laughs> True. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking like Romans 6, you know, and uh, when, um, you know, it's just y- y- you're ashamed of the things, you know, you come to Christ and and then now you're ashamed of all those things that you used to do. And for me, that was, that's like a personal testimony. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... You know, to be honest, I was living in the sins and the pleasures, especially in, in my youth uh, when I was young. And when I turned and, and really dedicated to Christ and to, to turn away from those uh, deeds that lead to death, I really felt the difference of I'm so glad that I don't have to be involved in that. I'm so glad that I'm free from from these Things that I'm ashamed of. Yeah. And and they lead to death. They lead to death, yeah. Whereas whereas now, uh, uh, in Christ, you feel the sense of being cleaned and renewed. And you know that eternally, you you, you have that assurance uh, of, of, of where you're going to go, of eternal life. Uh, and not having to live in the fear of, of constant death. Yeah, that, that's actually a good point because um, before we become Christians, um, the life we live, we think of it as we're living a life to the fullest. Yeah. And we try and amplify it, right? Um, if your desire is to be wealthy, you go for wealth. If it's for women, you try and date as many women or as, as pretty women as you can find. Uh, if it's the cars, you want to drive the fastest, loudest car. Yeah. So it's the idea that I'm just going to, try and amplify as yeah. much as I have yeah. because I feel like this is a game. Yeah. But then when you become a Christian and you read the Bible, it starts to speak about your previous lifestyle. One of the languages that the Bible used, which you, you were talking about, is death, 
right? Like, this is leading you to death. There is no pleasure in it. It is a desire that the flesh satisfies from, but at the end of the day, it is death. It speaks of it as a vomit, right? Exactly. When a person goes back to their sin, mm. it's like a dog going back to their vomit. Yeah. And it's something that the, the Bible is trying to paint a picture. You're eating something that you think is satisfying, but if you open your eyes, you find how disgusting it is. You're indulging in something that your body was rejecting, got, mm. got rid of when they became Christians, mm. and now you're back indulging in that. Mm. You know, it also speaks of it as shame, right? Mm -hmm. It Paul, when he's saying that the things that we used to do, mm. it's even shameful even to speak about, right? Right? Like not only to live in, not only to practice, but even to bring into your mind. Yeah. Paul is saying, no, that's so disgusting. Yeah. Like I don't want that to be part of your life. So the idea that when you become a Christian, the scales are turning. And you're like, okay, what I thought was a gain, now I'm counting as a loss. And what I thought was something that's going to be restricting, something that's going to be boring, something that's going to take away my life, and I'm just going to be this zombie Christian, right? Mm -hmm. I've got to go to church, and I've got to act like a good guy, this is that. You're like, no, that's not Christianity, right? There's a relationship yeah. in Christianity. And there's a freedom, <clears throat> There's, yeah, yeah. And there's so people freedom. see it maybe from the other side. You see it as a restriction, but when you come into it, you realize you were actually enslaved when you were in the sin, when you were away from mm -hmm. Christ. You you just see it differently. Yeah, and and by having the Holy Spirit, says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. freedom. Yeah. And if the Spirit of the Lord is living in us, we're living in that freedom. Yeah. That, that's the beauty of of being a Christian is that. You don't fight for your freedom. Christ has done that on the cross. All you need to do is receive that. Yeah. And, and that's the huge blessing that we have in Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. personally for you, yeah. and I would like to know on a personal level, what were some of the things when you became a Christian? Uh, you didn't just read in the Bible. Okay, I have this freedom. Mm. But you actually also experienced that. You're like, yeah. wow, that was liberating for me. Absolutely. Uh, it was actually something that you've touched on uh, when we say, and, and Jesus says that w he came to give us life and give us life in abundance. Whereas in the world, like you were saying, we, we look at, you know, you need to chase money. Yeah. You need to be in the rat race. You need to true, true. just be, uh, everyone is your rival. Like everyone is kind of like your enemy, you're competing against them and you're just constantly striving and fighting and, and you know, you're working really, really hard just so that you can have that edge over someone else and show that you're being successful. And, you know, in life, um, <clears throat> things, things happen, some things maybe throw you off course and, and that's, that would have been devastating for you because you, you're focusing your life on, on really getting on top. And, and life in general can, can throw you like a curveball. And then you're like, you're devastated. Everything in your life is, is broken. Yeah. So what Christ gives us is a freedom from all of that. It's like we, we, don't, we can get out of the rat race. We, we don't have to strive for money. We don't have to... Like one, it's really interesting. But in this world, if someone hates you, if someone attacks you... Yeah. You're their enemy. You need to fight back. And just there's this freedom of love your enemy. It's just, it, it, it breaks that. Like, you know, there's this contention in the world that should have been built up. But the Bible says do the opposite. Love them. Yeah. Forgive them. And to me, they were, um, they were one of the freedoms. The freedom of, of just, it felt like everyone is running down one path. And I, I found like, the secret, <laughs> the secret passage, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And that kind of connects to Matthew 11, mm. where Jesus says, come to me, yeah, everyone who's got a burden, mm. and I'll give you a rest. Yeah, right? absolutely. And let's exchange, right? I'll give you my burden. Mm. <coughs> you give me yours. Yeah. Sorry, bro, I've got the cough. It's, right. it's yeah. always been there for, for a very long time. Um, 
the idea is that okay now i can take off my burdens mm-hmm. and i can give it to christ it's not a sign of weakness it's a sign of surrender where life can be overwhelming and i'm going to give that to christ mm-hmm. and i like how jesus assures us in many different ways god's going to provide for you mm-hmm. god's That's not right. going to god's not going to let you go right god's going to protect you mm-hmm. right um god's going to take care of your family all these things to me i feel like he's taking away a burden yeah that you know as husbands as fathers we can place on that on ourselves very heavily yeah and i know a lot of people sometimes they even go through depressions and anxiety yeah. because they're like how am i going to provide for my family yeah for us it's like cool it's been tight a lot of times but God it's always been it's been tight a lot of times but i've never i've never <laughs> lacked i've never lacked um even you know even before uh you know when i you know when i was younger and I, I, there was times where i wasn't working and things like that and um i was having the bare minimum mm. uh even after when i was married uh, but i i never lacked even though it, <clears throat> it's supposed to be tight but it didn't feel like times were tight mm. Um, so that, that, that's an interesting experience that I've had. Cool. Cool. That's um, great. That's the, great. The other thing is, um, you mentioned that, um, you know, that we, we are kind of like giving up in a way where we're giving up the way that everyone else was going. And, and the way I see when, when Jesus says, I came to give you life and life more abundant, the, what he says before that is that the, the devil, the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. Mm. And actually that is what's happening when, you know, you're running the, the mainstream life, mm. you're running in a way where the devil is, is killing, he's killing your life. Mm. Um, he's stealing from your life. He's stealing from the joys, you know, uh, making you always think about, you have to be on top and you have to make money. Well, he's yeah. taking away the this, this life that God's given you, this relationship, fellowship with people because you're always, you know, working or something. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and to destroy. And you're saying like depression and all of that. It plays in, right? Yeah. It plays in. I'm connecting the doc, dots as you're talking. Yeah. Is that, you know how the devil came to steal, kill and destroy and Jesus came to give life yeah. to its fullest? Um. In First John chapter three, it speaks about the unbelievers, mm-hmm. the devil being their father, yeah, and the believers having God their father. So, one of the huge gains as a Christian is that you're coming out of this abusive relationship, yeah, where your dad just wants to take advantage of you, wow, right, into this um, nurturing um, environment yeah. where God's like, I want to give everything from me, even put my life yeah. on the cross just to nurture you yeah. and get you to grow and to have life in you. Yeah. So if if you're going to speak to anyone who's who's been in an abusive family, right? Yeah. And they're like, I am so glad I'm out of it. Yeah. Right? Whether the father was, a, you know, gets drunk or very violent or yeah. goes and gambles the family savings or whatever it is. You you come back and you're like, that was a horrible experience. Guess what? As a non-believer, that's the relationship that you're in. The thing is, the devil is so deceptive. Mm-hmm. That's not going to make it look like this one. Yeah. Right? He's, he's so deceptive that you feel like, I'm doing fine in my family. Mm-hmm. But the reality is your spiritual father yeah. is out there to kill you, to yeah. hurt you, to take advantage of you. You know, and and he doesn't want you to move to a better family. Yeah, and, but the, and you've that, got these neighbors. Yeah. You're like, wait, these guys are doing so great. <laughs> you look, you compare the fathers, and you're like, okay, I can see why. Yeah, that that's the characteristic of uh, abusive <laughs> abusiveness, whether it's like narcissism uh, or you know even sociopathic. If 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 you have um, like a leadership figure with with those kind of mental disorders, yeah. which are kind of very selfish, and you can apply them to a Satan characteristic, uh, is that they lead when the abuser keeps the person dangling. Like, you know, they do all this abuse, but then they do one thing to try and make up for it. It's not always just abuse, abuse, abuse. It, it's like they, uh, there's a term for it. 
Uh, I think it's I think it's trauma bonding. I'm not exactly sure, but okay. What what it is is uh, they try to keep the person dangling along at the bare bare minimum. Bare minimum. You know, yeah. uh, and and that's why a lot of people stay in these relationships. Yeah, um, it, it's funny because you're talking about narcissism. Is you've got someone that's not worthy of worship. Mm. He's desiring everyone to worship him, and you've got someone who's worthy of all worship. Decides to put that away, come back in a form of servant, yeah. and dies on the cross. He's like, I'm going to take the form of a servant, and I'm going to die the most shameful death there yeah. is, just for you. So I believe the gain that we have in God, and you'll see that in Romans, you see that in First John, is that God loved us first. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, if you say that we love God first... It'll make sense in a way. You're like, okay, we were disobedient. We were crazy people. We want to change our life around. Yeah. And we want to try and win God, right? Because, you know, like sometimes in a marriage, mm. y- you have one person that's, you know, being horrible. Yeah. And they're like, okay, now I've got to change mm. to win my partner back, right? Here, <laughs> he's like, no, you guys are terrible. <laughs> you're missing the mark. You're sinning. You're doing everything I'll tell you not to do. Mm. But I'm going to love you first. Yeah. And I'm going to plan to bring peace between me and you. And that peace is Jesus. That that mediator is Jesus. Yeah. And I'm going to put him there. And if you come to him, you receive everything. Yeah. I Like everything that Jesus says. I, and like, you know, the I am's. The I am's. I am the resurrection of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. All these I am's, you're like, oh, that's amazing who Jesus is. But a, a lot of Christians don't put it into perspective as, wait, the person that said these things is in me. Mm. And I in him. So everything he says he is, and he's a trustworthy person, He what he says is true, I have yeah. in my life. And he offered that to us. He, he yeah, came and he, and he didn't just give it in an easy way. He came to earth and he suffered and he died and and he was, you know, he didn't have to do that at all. Yeah. Um, and he did that because of his love. And like you were saying before, it's opposite. So narcissism is is selfishness. It's what can I get? How can I deceive? How can I do whatever it takes to get what I want? Whereas Christ came in love. I want to give to my children. Mm. You know, I have everything and they have nothing. They're yeah. dying, and I just want to give my life to them, uh, and that's essentially what you're coming into when you're coming into the the blessing. You you're moving away from the devil, who is the the narcissist, the the person who just wants everything for himself, who would abuse you. You're coming into this loving, warm father, you know, true father who who loves you, and also like I was saying before. When you're in sin, in the back of your mind, you're not thinking about it, but in the back of your mind, you know you're going to death. Yeah. And and having that taken away, having that like, I'm not going to death anymore. You know, just even if you don't think it consciously, but in the back of your mind, you feel it. And that's the difference I felt. That's the, the one of the main blessings. Yeah. Yeah. That's encouraging. Because <laughs> I felt the same way. Yeah. I'm like, wait. I don't have fear of death anymore. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was the type of person growing up. I'm like, I'm ready to die for you, Jesus. Mm. Like, everything is yours. Yeah. Like, it went from, oh, I want to try and live my life mm. and see what I can squeeze out of it before my final day until I'm like, wait, there's nothing interesting in this life for me. Mm. I'm looking for the next life ahead. That's right. right. We're like, looking forward. I mean, it's not like, you know, we just want to escape this life. Because, oh, yeah. you know, we obviously have we, God's, God's put us here for a reason. God's essentially put us here to serve the people around us. Yes. Um, and like, it's, it's exactly what Paul said. He said, you know, I desire to go. Yeah. But I, I desire to be here for you guys as well. For your benefit, yeah. right? <laughs> so that's, that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the, I think, huge advantages that we have in in Christ, the gains that we have is that we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I often see that, like, especially in the beginning of Philippians, 
you know, you read that in, in the beginning of uh, 1 Corinthians, mm. right? Speaks about us having the mind of Christ. Yeah. And um, not only living like Christ, but also thinking like Christ. Yeah. To, to me, it's, it's a huge statement because you're basically saying you have God's mind. You have the mind of Christ, who is God, mm-hmm. and now you need to start thinking like Christ. Yeah, and now you need to have His perspective, the way you treat people, the way you see people, and so on. Yeah, we sure. obviously are not divine. That's uh, please don't mistake that. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying that when we have the mind of Christ, is because Christ is in us. We read the Word. We develop his his mind. Yeah, so, our desires and, become. Yeah. you know, his our desires become what yeah. he desires. You know? So to me, that was like, yeah, I was blown away. It's interesting. Uh, I was also reading uh, Philippians, so Philippians chapter three, and one of the things we benefit uh, is freedom from religion. Mm. So a religious mindset, and so um, Paul's talking about how he was, you know, the greatest. Uh, in terms of following the law, uh, he followed the law to you know the last T, and uh, all his status where before Christ, uh, following his religious duties, and he then considers that after knowing Christ and having having the mind of Christ, he he sees all of that as you know all his works uh, dirty rags, um, and. I think being freedom from a, a religious mindset is also one of the, the greatest things of, of knowing Christ. And where that, you might think that only people who are Christians have religious mindsets, but I think a religious mindset is a fleshly thing. It's inherent. If you're not religious at all, people have like OCD type behaviors. Yeah. Um, so uh, some people who are in a church who are called Christians develop um, maybe religious habits and yeah. things which which it seems like they're doing work for God. It seems like they're, they're pleasing God, but they're just mindless rituals. Yeah. And that was the other thing that when you come to know Christ, you're, you're free from all of that. Um, you know, we, we don't have to really do anything he's done he's done everything for us yeah. uh, and then but you also say see people working for christ and doing things like that but it's out of the free will and the love and the spirit that god has given people it's not out of religious bondage that that reminds me because when i was very young man i'm talking like maybe 15 years ago um and i was before no even more than that way longer than that before I was a Christian, I remember driving with my friend, and every time he goes past a church, he'll do like the sign of a cross. Right. Yeah. And I always found it straight. I'm like, why do you do that? It's like, oh, because there's a church here. I'm like, dude, bro, like we do the most horrible things in, in, <laughs> as you know, as non-believers. Yeah. Like we swear and do this and do that. You're like, what's that gonna do? Yeah. But he's like, no, no, that's that's what I do. Yeah. So it's like it's like a, you know you develop a religious habit, but it's not in Christ, and and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, and and, and for for Paul in Philippians three, he he sets all these things right. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Mm. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was a Pharisee. Yeah. Concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Concerning the law, I was blameless. Mm. Like he's listing. His achievements, mm. his spiritual inheritance, right? As an Israelite, he's saying, I can't, all that. The English word says rubbish, mm. but it's actually like waste, human waste. Right. Right. So, yeah. yeah, like dung. Yeah. Right. Um, that's what the King James puts it as dung. Yeah. And New King James just puts it as rubbish. So it's like, you know, trying to soften the blood. But if you like all these things, you count as nothing mm. just to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Mm. That means anything that I'm letting go of is nothing compared to what I'm gaining. Yeah. And Jesus gives a great parable, right? He's saying that he speaks about a person that digs a treasure, mm. right? And he's saying in his joy, he sells everything to buy the land so he can get the treasure. 
We, what he was giving up, he was giving up in joy. A lot of people forget right. about the part where in his joy, a lot of people say, wow, he sold everything. Yeah. But it's like he it's missed like it. He missed in his joy because he know he, he's found something much, much greater. He's oh, yeah. gaining. You yeah. just don't see it. I think that's where Christians should should have a, like th- that should be a, a, a learning point. Yeah. Where if I feel sad giving up a sin for Christ, mm. I'm not, I don't know the value of Christ and I don't know what how, you're gaining. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what, what I'm gaining. gaining. Yeah. And also, I'm not. I don't know what I'm giving up, mm-hmm. because I still think there's value in that sin, you know. But if I'm like, I'm so joyful, I'm out of this sin. I have Jesus, then you know what Christ's value is, and you know how terrible that thing was for you. Yeah. So, um, any closing remarks on that? I, look, that's something we can keep on talking about. Yeah, that's right. But. Anything in regards to gains in Christ? I just, um, I think it's something that you can experience, anyone can have. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't experienced it, uh, it's just a matter of, you know, it's, it's a simple prayer and ask, asking God, you know, show me, show me your way, show me this hidden treasure. And you will never regret that decision. It will be the best decision of your life. You will see the world as... Going back to, you, you said that verse, you know, you, a dog going back to its vomit. That is exactly what worldliness is like after you see Christ. It's true. Yeah. It's true. And, and I think, you know what? Um, leaving an abusive father, yeah. running away, and then coming back to that father, yeah. you, you're in worse, you know, judgment, right? He's going to treat you worse. And that's what Jesus says. He says, he speaks about a person who's been freed from a spirit. Yeah. Right, that person is empty, and that spirit goes around, doesn't find anything, yeah. comes back, finds that place still empty. Like, okay, I'm gonna bring seven more demons. Yeah. So if you think like I haven't gained anything in Christ, and I'm gonna go back to the world, then when you go back to the world, you're gonna be seven times worse, and the devil's not gonna just welcome you back. He's gonna treat you worse. So that's why. The main point of our podcast is for you to recognize what you have in Christ. It's not restricting. It's actually liberating. Mm. You know, it's not something that I can't do anything in life. No, no, no. You can do so much more in life. Right. And God wants to free you from from your sin. But also he wants to free you from that mindset. Because remember now you have the mindset of Christ. So God wants to show you how he sees things. And how he sees the world. And how he sees you too. Because a lot of times, even though Christ has accepted us and healed us, sometimes we don't accept ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's something that Christ will help you see. So God bless you. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.